Someone asked me on Monday morning, is it just me or are you totally discouraged with UNC's transfer portal movement? My answer, no, not at all. You are Locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, it's Tuesday, April 4th, 2023. Welcome into the Locked on Tar Heels podcast the only daily North Carolina show out there. I'm your host, Isaac Shade, and I want to welcome you into the show today. We've been going pretty hard on looking at different transfer portal targets. We're going to get back to that, but I just needed a break from all the names. You probably did too, uh, so today's show won't have that. Tomorrow, Coach Pat Kilby and I will be doing uh, some review of Carolina's wings from this year, but then on Thursday's show, we'll get back to looking at some transfer portal targets. By the way, real quick before we get into today's conversation, just finished watching the national championship game, wanted to kind of have that in my brain as I got into recording today, and man, it was bittersweet. Just, I I relived so many of the memories from last year, Um, all the great moments, and of course, all the sad moments too of um, being up 15 at halftime. I remember I walked by Adam Lucas, and we were talking about it at the half, and I was like, man, it, it doesn't guarantee a championship, but you got to feel good, right? And so we, I just remember some of those moments, and then it was just like, no, <laughs> second half Kansas. But what what an opportunity, what a run it was. And so just fun to relive some of those moments. I hope you did the same. And uh, to, uh, Monday night's championship for UConn was a great reminder of a dominant North Carolina team because UConn became just the fifth ever champion to win all six of their NCAA tournament games by 10 or more points. That list, obviously, you know, includes 2009 Tar Heels, but also 2000 Michigan State, the last time Big East won a national championship, 2001 Duke, 09 Carolina, 18 Villanova, and now the 23 UConn Huskies. And what a dominant run. They're the only team ever to win all six NCAA tournament games by 13 or more points. Congrats to Danny Hurley and his team on their first, uh, on his first, I should say, national championships. UConn's fifth in the last 24 tournaments. Wild, wild stuff. Anyway, let's get into the question at hand that I asked off the top. Am I worried about a lack of noise or anything else going on in the transfer portal? So this, what I quoted off the top was the exact question asked to me. I'll I'll read it again. Quote, is it just me or are you totally discouraged with UNC's transfer portal movement? Uh, Maybe you're feeling some of that as well. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're just riding the wave and seeing what happens. This to me is a very valid question to ask. Uh, because a lot of times you want to hear what's going on. You want to know what's going on. We want to be on the inside of knowing like every conversation, every player Carolina is connected to who's who's what's a serious conversation. What's just checking in all of that stuff. And Carolina, it has been connected to quite a few names has had people in. We know that, but other than Paxson Wojcik, no commitments as of yet. And so that's where maybe some of the concern comes in. Well, let me give you a couple analogies that help me process these kind of moments. Think about a duck on the water. If you look above the surface, cool, calm, and collected, right? But underneath, man, it is a flurry of fury of kicking feet, kicking, keeping that duck just going right along steady as she goes. But that doesn't mean that there's not a flurry of activity going on just because we can't see it above the water. You know what I mean? You see how that connects? Or let me give an example. I know a lot of you are Braves fans, just like me. Um, The Braves general manager, his name is Alex Anthopoulos. He is famous now for keeping Braves like negotiations, free agent talks, trade talks under wraps. While a lot of other teams are publicizing who they're talking to, what kind of trade bait they're dangling, who they're looking at in free agency. Anthopolis will not. And so the Braves fan base, Braves beat writers, other media speculate like wild, speculate like crazy because nobody knows except for just a small inner circle. And so everyone speculates, speculates what they think the Braves are going to do. But then boom, out of 
complete right turn. You've thought about all five of these names, and here comes some sixth or seventh guy out of nowhere that you never thought about or expected because Alex Anthopoulos is playing 3D chess <laughs> while the rest of us are just going for the uh, status quo or the least common denominator, a, a trade or a signing out of nowhere that you don't expect. And, and honestly, a lot of times it feels like a really unsexy choice, like that dude, okay, right? You know what I mean? But w- almost without exception, it turns out to be the right choice because Anthopolis knows exactly what he's looking for and he knows exactly what he's doing. And I'm not saying that Hubert Davis and the coaching staff necessarily have that going on, but there's got to be some kind of that vibe. And so my answer to this person that asked me this question and my, my answer to you, if, if you feel the same way, like, hey, I'm pretty worried here that I'm not hearing a lot of movement from Carolina is no, I, I'm really not concerned. Keep in mind at this time last year, as we wake up on Tuesday morning, Carolina was waking up the day after just finishing their last game of the season. Yes, the coaching staff had been having conversations in between games and things like that. But Carolina hadn't really done much of anything yet. Hadn't really had time to make headway. And so here's what we all need to know. Just because you and I aren't publicly hearing things from inside the program doesn't mean that there isn't a ton of activity going on. Believe you me, there is. Well, the, like, so one of the follow-ups might be, well, what about Nick Timberlake? Why, why didn't we hear anything else from him? He took a visit to campus, and when Paxson Wojcik did that, he committed right on the spot. Why hasn't Nick Timberlake done that? Should we be worried? Is he out? Is he not going to be a Tar Heel? Well, let me, let me say four things about that, because that's another great question. Should, should we be concerned that Nick Timberlake is out? And that's assuming you want him, <laughs> which obviously the coaching staff – doesn't care what you or I or anyone else thinks. They're going to do what they want to do. I'll say four things about Timberlake. Number one, he could just be wanting to take his time and visit other places. Remember and keep in mind, this transfer portal um, commitment and recruiting process is microwaved while the high school recruiting process is crockpot. You get that difference. And so when there's an opportunity to take a little bit longer, be a little more thorough in your decision-making, why not take that time? Now, I get it. If, if you know it's the right spot for you, go ahead, commit. Because you. if I can use some date, I'm using a, not, a lot of analogies today. I apologize. Think about dating. If you've already dated around some and you kind of know what you're looking for, it's a little bit easier to look for that and then commit. If you haven't done that yet, i.e. a high school player, it's harder to know exactly what you're looking for. I get that. So... I, On one hand, it could be Timberlake just taking his time with the process. And I don't begrudge him that one second. Number two, he could be out, right? He's not publicly said that. He might have gone and not seen what he was looking for. And if so, we'll eventually find that out. And that's okay. Because you're not going to get everybody. Or third, it could be that with Wojcik committing, he thought, man, that I would probably get a lot of that same playing time if I was there. And so I don't want to go and do that. And if so, okay, I, I'd rather have somebody that wants to compete and try to win that playing time. Um, and I'm, again, I, these are all hypotheticals. We, we don't know what uh, Nick Timberlake is doing right now, but that's, that's one of the possibilities is um, there are some ways in which these two guys are pretty similar players. They're obviously not identical, um, but maybe that plays into it. Fourth, it could just be that we haven't heard more yet. In the same vein of this whole conversation, he's probably still having more conversations with the coaching staff, talking back and forth with them, keeping them up to date with where he's at in the process and what's going on. Um, That doesn't mean that that always has to be public. And I know that we don't want to hear that answer, but that could be the answer. Or there could be anything outside of these four things that I've given you. But I just want, want us all to be able to keep in mind that there's a lot of potential of what could be the reason we haven't heard more yet from Timberlake or anyone else. So for me, I'm not concerned about the lack of hearing more about transfer portal news. But why might that be? What what might exactly be why we're not hearing more? I want to get further into that side of the conversation, and we'll do that in just a second. 
But first, I want to tell you about Built Bar. The Built March Madness bracket is here. We know that you've got a favorite Built Bar or Puff, and now's your time to make it count by going to BuiltMarchMadness.com to vote for your favorite. You know, I'm going to be voting for the Churro Bar. I'd love to know what you're voting for. And when you do so, you'll be entered in a drawing to be one of 50 lucky Locked On listeners to win a free box of Built. And one Locked On listener will win a full 12-month subscription to Built to have Built's best bars or puffs delivered directly to your door every month for a year. You got to try Built. It's so good. What makes it that way? Well, high in protein, low in sugar, and covered in 100% real chocolate. So friends, run to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now to vote for your favorite bar or puff and go ahead and pick up a box while you're there. You won't be disappointed in Built Bar, a proud sponsor of the Locked On Network. By the way, make sure you ch also check out our brand new podcast on the Locked On Network, Locked On College Basketball. Yes, the season might be over, but this show is with you five days a week, all year long. Now they'll move into off-season content, looking at Transfer Portal, which I know everyone's interested in, coaching carousel, draft declarations, all sorts of stuff like that, high school recruiting. So make sure you're tuned in to Locked on College Basketball. It's available on YouTube and anywhere else you get podcasts. So why might Hubert Davis and staff not be letting out a ton of information? Well, let me ask you this question. If you are Hubert Davis, if you are the staff, don't you think you would benefit by playing things a little close to the vest? Do, do you want everyone to know who you're going after? Right? There, there's a big old massive pool out there. Some players very obvious, some flying below the radar. Think about like an NFL draft war room, right? We're coming up on the NFL draft. It's going to be two hours up the road for me in Kansas City this year. Unfortunately, I'm going to be out of town, so I can't go. Would love to go be part of that. But think about how secretive those war rooms are. They ain't going to tell you who they're who they're targeting and what things they're looking at. Even, even in the most obvious of draft scenarios, like Victor Wembanyama this year is going to be the number one picked in the NBA draft. After we have the draft lottery, I'm, it might be that somebody comes out and tells us, but it is very rare that we actually hear who, who a team is going to be selection selecting. Why should this be any different? If you're Hubert Davis and the coaching staff and you think you have an edge, you think you have something you're looking for, you think you have something you've isolated or picked out that maybe other teams or coaching staffs haven't seen, I ain't letting that get out. Not a chance. Perhaps there's the big names that everyone's in on, like um, LJ Cryer, who just jumped in the portal on Monday, or Max Asmus from Or Roberts, or, you know, we've talked about Hunter Dickinson or Kalel Ware from Oregon, all these big names. But maybe you've identified some overlooked mid-major kid that nobody else has caught on to, that they're not in on. You know, think about in baseball, like an international prospect or something that it's like, why isn't anyone catching what this dude is doing, right? And then you want to go get him. It's like some kind of money ball action where it's like, oh, we, have, we are seeking this specific trait and this dude's got it and nobody's in on him. I'm not letting anyone know. I'm bringing him in under a cloak of darkness and making it happen. Now, I know there are going to be times when a, a dad or the player himself is going to say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to visit this school and I've heard from these five. And, and that's the job of, of media and people like me to figure out those things. But, you know, and there's something fun in the mystery sometimes. I know we want to know, but sure. Here's another thing. I know there are still five scholarships out there, and I know that that's part of this conversation is like, uh, we got a lot of money to blow here in terms of we got a lot of scholarships to blow here. So let's start to get some guys locked up. I hear that part of the argument in a big way. But keep in mind, all in this process of looking at recruiting transfers, you're also having conversations, as, as we've talked about with Elliot Cadeau. You're having conversations with Ian Jackson. Does it make sense for either or, or both of you to come on now? That, that's part of this conversation for North Carolina. Keep in mind, you're also, if you're the Tar Heels, probably having conversations with guys who are going through the NBA draft process who may or may not return. That's exactly what happened with Pete Nance last year. Carolina got him after he decided he was coming back to school. 
you know, if if there's somebody that there's mutual interest in and they definitely want to be with you and you definitely want them, go ahead. Pull the trigger right now. But at this point, there's no problem in stringing it out a little bit longer to make absolute sure that it's the right person. We've seen, like, think about this year. Wouldn't you rather Carolina take a few weeks longer to identify the exact right person for their personnel and what they need than hurry up and get somebody right now and it be the wrong person? I would. I don't want to end up in a marriage where I end up looking for a divorce when it could have been really fruitful marriage if I had spent another couple of weeks looking for the person I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. So, and also keep in mind, the pool is going to keep getting larger. There are going to be more players that come into the transfer portal and big name players. I mean, we've seen it. Our own Caleb Love is in the transfer portal. Um, by the way, I heard on Monday, you probably did as well. It sounds like it's down to Missouri or Indiana for Caleb services. So we'll keep our eyes on that. But there's there's a lot of big and talented names in the portal, but there's also a lot of really, really good mid-major guy. Like I go back to Dalton Connect. I still really want him to come play for Carolina and be a wing. Like Carolina needs wings. We'll be talking about wings on tomorrow's show. And as I've already said, remember, we know from what we've heard inside the program that it is a flurry of activity. So don't, don't think that coach Davis and the coaching staff are just kicking back, drinking my ties on the beach somewhere. No, they are working their butts off to figure this thing out so that they don't have a repeat of this year and keep in mind that they don't owe us anything right? Like they don't have to tell us some programs do that. They want to get everything out there, create buzz and stuff, but they don't owe us anything. And neither do they owe the NCAA anything. There's no like mandated reporting on on all this thing. There's no mandated contact policy. It's just, you put your name in the transfer portal and then go figure it out. Right? So we're obviously going to continue to speculate, think about names, dream about names, talk about names. But in a lot of ways, there's not going to be anything to talk about till there's something to talk about. So on the show here, we'll keep I'm going to keep throwing out names because I think it's fun. And I think you think it's fun, right, to to think about who fits, who doesn't like I, I love all the comments that people give back on YouTube about Isaac. What on earth are you talking about with this dude? There's no way he fits or makes sense. Or sometimes it's like, yeah, that's a great pick. I love it. And, and hear me, I'm just, I'm just out here giving reasons of why I think somebody would be or wouldn't be a good fit. I, I love having all those conversations. You're, you're not being mean or just uh, wrong to me by saying no. Like, I, I love it and welcome those conversations. I think it's fun. That's half uh, of the joy of the offseason now is transfer portal conversations. So keep on bringing all that noise. So, again, when there's something to know, We'll all know. I'll tell you. You'll probably already know anyway. But in the meantime, we're just going to continue to speculate and have fun and realize that no news doesn't mean bad news. Okay? Let's all be in on that together. However, for the women's team, they just got some good news about an addition from the transfer portal and some good news for a couple of their incoming freshmen who have been at the top of the sport in their state. And we'll talk about that in just a second. All right. Well, as we've spent most of the show talking about the men's basketball team in the transfer portal, the women's team actually has already received some good news. As as you know, if you, if you watch the women play this year, they were such a good and competitive team. But what they really struggled with and really lacked was an interior presence, some rebounding struggles. I mean, it was it was rebounding by committee and they did a very commendable job with that. But just we're, we're missing some glass work there. And, and I don't think any of them would say anything different. And so uh, they desperately needed post presence and they got it on Monday. And of course, they've got some incoming post presence as well. And by the way, Coach Courtney Banghart, just I think she's phenomenal. I think she's doing a great job with this program uh, while she may just like me. She is not um, a Tar Heel alum or anything like that. I just think that she's got Tar Heel DNA all over her. I think she's a great leader. I'm not, I mean, clearly she's been recognized by national magazines and publications for her leadership capability. So yes, absolutely. She is a great leader. So um, here, here's the, the deal on it. Women get a transfer. It is Maria Gakdang from Boston College. She's a 6'3 post player, originally from Lanham, Maryland. 
She's played two years at Boston College, started both of them. I think play started all but one game in those two years. So great stuff there. So since she's only played two years, she'll have two years of eligibility. Remember, she this class, the upcoming junior class, is the first one that won't have COVID eligibility. So just two years. She, she won't have an option of a fifth year in total or a third year at Carolina, barring some kind of red shirt for medical or other reasons. Let me give you some numbers on Maria. So this season, 11.3 points a game, six and a half rebounds, 57.8% from the field, that second in the ACC. There was one of those things where she didn't quite actually qualify uh, to be the second leading free throw percentage getter, but the number actually was there. 1.8 blocks a game, 1.3 assists per game, which was third in the ACC. And so um, love her well-rounded game, love her ability as, as a center or as a post player to not just be a black hole, but to be a distributor as well. And, and so that's great news. When I said, you know what, third in the ACC, that's not assists per game. That was blocks per game. I apologize. I was looking at the wrong thing. Last season had great numbers as a freshman as well in the 21-22 season. Uh, slight dip in points, 8.9, but 6.3 rebounds. 58.3 field goal percentage. That's up 2.2 blocks a game. She made the ACC all freshman team and was the ACC freshman of the week five times two seasons ago. And so really encouraging to get her on this roster that needs, needs front court help. And so, man, I, I just think this is a massive get for the Tar Heels. Now, one thing she does need to work on, Miss Maria Gecting, is her free throw shooting, a 55% career free throw shooter. So hopefully uh, she will uh, get a lot of and one opportunities, but not get hack a shacked to death. So uh, some really interesting quotes, one, both, one from Coach Banghart, one from Maria herself. Coach Banghart says this, we have been very intentional and selective in monitoring the transfer portal. Again, you want to go back to the men's conversation? That's a great quote. Today is a great day as we are thrilled to add someone of Maria's talent and character to our Tar Heel family. She has great experience and success in our league, and she is aligned perfectly in our competitive and collective goals. I love that, man. This is a young lady you want on your team, and I love uh, that just subtle insight there from Coach Banghart about she, how she and the coaching staff are handling who they go get in the transfer portal. Obviously, it's so sad to lose Kennedy, Todd Williams, um, but uh, it's nice to be able to start getting some ladies back. And, and Maria herself, this is why she said she chose UNC. I chose Carolina to be a part of something special. Not only did the coaches, players, and environment feel like home, but I would also be surrounded by a winning culture and a group that wants to see one another at their best on and off the court, end quote. That's a teammate right there. I'll take that any day of the week. So once again, I love this pickup for the ladies. Coach Banghart continues to keep this thing rolling. And remember, this this will be year five coming up. Just taking steps, moving forward slowly but surely every single year. And no reason to think this won't be another great year coming up where you get back Alyssa Utsby, you get back Deja Kelly, you get back Paulina Paris and Kayla McPherson, man, just all these ladies that have really helped move this thing in the right direction. Not to mention now this transfer from Boston College and a really talented incoming freshman class. And I want to mention a couple of them as we get ready to wrap up the show. Two of the four incoming freshmen have won their state championships this year. So um, one is Renaya Kelly, who won state championship in the biggest class in Alabama, biggest classification in 7A. She plays for Hoover High School, which is like in the Birmingham area. Hoover is a, a national football powerhouse. Great stuff that they have. But Kelly's a 5'7 point guard, ranked 30th in the ESPN rankings. Um, but man, anyone who's winning not only a state championship, but doing it at the highest classification in their state, that is a big deal. The other young lady is Sierra Toomey, who you might be aware had ACL surgery like 10 months ago and then has just been furiously working her way back um, and helped Dunmore High School in Pennsylvania win their first ever state championship in 3A. And so congrats to Sierra on that win. 
Um, and then also she is going to be a big help along with Gak Ding in the front court. She's a six, four big, um, who, man, you're just, it's so nice to get in some of these ladies. Um, and she, uh, I mean, it's impressive Kelly being 30th in ESPN's rankings to comes in fourth in ESPN's rankings for the class of 23. Great stuff. And just as a quick reminder, the other two freshmen coming in, Riley Gray's a 6'3 center. So, man, just <clears throat> loading up on front court help here. And then 6'1 wing, Layla Hull, who was the Indiana player of the year. So uh, just, again, a really, really talented class coming in for Coach Banghart. Cannot wait to see what the 23-24 season holds for the Lady Tar Heels. Obviously, in the meantime, we're going to keep talking all the spring sports going on. Great stuff. Can't wait to see how the women's tennis team continues to roll through things. Women's lacrosse has taken their first couple losses now, um, but both on the road against top 12 opponents. You can understand and live with that, so they'll be right back. Don't you worry. Friends, that's it for today's episode of Locked on Tar Heels. Coming up tomorrow, our guy, Coach Pat Kilby, will be with us. We will be reviewing this year's wings for the Carolina basketball team. Um, so that'll be a great conversation there. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked on Heels. You can follow me on Twitter at Isaac Shade. Email the show, LockedOnTarHeels at gmail.com. Would love to have your nominations for the Heels of the week, the both good and bad. Don't forget to subscribe to the show, smash the like button, and leave some comments on your thoughts on today's conversation. I'm really curious to hear what you all think. Do you agree like you're frustrated and concerned by the lack of knowledge about the transfer portal, or are you just comfortable waiting to see what happens? Also, as a reminder, for your next listen, don't forget to check out Locked on College Basketball. Andy Patton and myself are the co-hosts, and we come at you five days a week, even in the off season. So make sure you tune in to Locked On, uh, I almost said Tar Heels, college basketball on YouTube and anywhere else you get podcasts. Really appreciate you hanging out with me on a Tuesday talking Carolina athletics. Great conversation. It's always a great day to be a Tar Heel. Until tomorrow, peace. <laughs>